general background and then talk about the uh, program uh, for this week and the speakers. Um, so uh, it's interesting that you brought up uh, both Norbert Wiener and the fact that cybernetics has had taken a back seat for some time. I think uh, the seeds of that were there in Norbert Wiener's work itself, uh, which is um, uh, kind of this dissociation between information and the physical system, which if you read in cybernetics, he emphasizes. And that's the same kind of Cartesian dualism that you know, perhaps um, vitiates this field where one wants to think about either AI or, or information divorced from the body, so to speak. And one really needs to um, undo that divorce to make uh, progress. So, I think this is an excellent uh, program that uh, you've had going for some years. Um, I want to say a couple words about uh, what I've been uh, doing in this uh, space. So I was at Bell Labs for, I'm trained as a theoretical physicist and then I work in neuroscience. I was at Bell Laboratories for about 10 years and there I organized a series of uh, meetings which we called uh, theoretical engineering seminar series, and this was regarded as an oxymoron because what is theoretical engineering? Engineering is a practical subject. Uh, but I, I think that there are subjects like control theory or communication theory or uh, theory of computation that are taught in engineering uh, programs, which are really theories and, and are necessary for us to understand biological systems. Uh, there have been some uh, meetings, uh, I've listed them, I think uh, this um, my participation here came out of a discussion we had last year uh, with Paul. Um, I invite you to go and uh, look at the lectures for this school here, which is available on the web. Uh, also, there's a little manifesto that you can find. Um, if you Google design principles in biological systems, you'll find um, uh, the IMA school. Uh, there's also some videotape lectures. Um, and the idea behind this series of meetings that I had organized was really to bring engineers and biologists, theoretical engineers and biologists together, um, and also biologists who work at different scales, uh, whether it be at the molecular cellular scale or at the uh, whole system organism scale. And uh, I uh, uh, can't uh, resist quoting Darwin. Um, he says the grand question which every naturalist ought to have before him or her, uh, when dissecting a whale or classifying a mite, a fungus, or an infusorian, or what are the laws of life? So I think he's exhorting us as perhaps the prime theorist in biology to, to think in theoretical terms. And in, in physics, um, we have this famous set of volumes. I don't know if there are physicists in the audience, but there is this kind of c canon, um, Landau and Lipschitz, you can just buy. Um, and it's somewhat dated, but you can pretty much read through the volumes and, and learn. It's a course in theoretical physics. And I, I asked myself, well, what would that sort of volumes look like for theoretical biology? I think this is still to be written. And um, one of the reasons I started these uh, meetings that I was referring to was to, to, to think about what would be uh, the content of um, such a course. And you could argue that there would certainly be biophysics and biochemistry if you want how things work kind of questions, but there'd also be uh, engineering theory. Uh, so theory of design, if you want, so why questions. Um, the theory of evolution, which we have always had, which in some sense builds a bridge between the two. And um, then of course, uh, analyzing data, which uh, uh, informatics or statistics uh, comes in. Um, and the, uh, uh, the suggestion that I wanted to make was that one can start with the existing theories. So you go to any engineering school and there are these theories you can, you can learn, uh, apply those theories uh, across scales in biological systems. The example of homeostasis that Paul gave um, uh, is, uh, I think, a very good example to think about. I, I really like Walter Cannon's book, if um, any of you haven't uh, encountered it, I highly uh, recommend it. Um, and a validation of this uh, would be, real validation would be gain of function experimental manipulation. So both building robots, but perhaps reprogramming biological systems. You know, I, I would like to have a real fly circus, right? So that would be great if one could understand genetics well enough to do that and then integrate that with the theory uh, of uh, evolution. And um, I think perhaps the uh, most uh, profound uh, 
tool one has to understand these design principles is convergent evolution. If um, there is really a, an abstract principle, biology might find it multiple times independently, and that um, uh, would really be proof that uh, it's not just history, but, but an underlying principle that governs. Um, uh, and an example, a very brief one uh, that I would give is, if you look at um, historical analysis or phylogenetic analysis, this is an example from linguistics, you can organize languages in a particular way. Um, it's just a theory in some sense of languages. Many of us speak Indo-European languages which come from a common root. But then one can organize languages in a different way uh, from quote unquote a functional cladistics. Um, I recommend this book by Mark Baker called The Atoms of Language, um, in which um, you could take uh, uh, different parameters uh, that languages satisfy. Here's an example. If you take word order, uh, subject, ver verb, object, subject, object, verb, are two different out of six possible orders of subject object verb in, in sentences. And if you look across all the languages that exist, this is a survey, I, I suppose, uh, mostly these two patterns are seen and the other patterns are not really seen. And so you can organize languages according to these uh, parameters that are not historical. Um, and so I, I uh, would love to see if one could organize a reorganize a phylogenetic tree according to uh, principles. And bats fly and birds fly, but flight was reinvented in, in bats and birds. Um, and so the uh, National Academy uh, some years ago, in fact, came up with this uh, um, uh, National Academy of Sciences in the, in the US uh, came up with this um, report on the role of theory in advancing 21st century biology. And uh, in there, they say a variety of things. Um, one of the things that they say is, um, Oops. Uh, what are the engineering principles of life? So, so people recognize this. I, I don't think the discourse is very well formulated yet. And that part of the ongoing discussion in these schools um, and workshops is still uh, necessary. Um, I uh, wanted to, let's see, oops. Um, and, and one of the issues, I think, has been that uh, people have equated architecture, if you want, to just the, I'm taking the specific case of brain networks and uh, the, the notion of architecture, which should contain the notion of function, really has been equated more to the structure, to the interaction of the uh, connectivity graph. And uh, I think as Paul was um, laying out a conceptual organization of what the brain does, not just in terms of how it is connected. Um, I think that, that discourse uh, is really still, uh, still to happen. I don't think engineers themselves do much better at, at defining architecture. So this is the IEEE definition of architecture. It says, uh, fundamental organization of a system embodied in its components, their relations to each other and to the environment and the principles guiding its design and evolution. Um, so um, I think the problem is that there is no mention of function, what the system does and how it does it, uh, except indirectly by reference to design and evolution. Um, and I ask myself, how do uh, architects, uh, people who actually build buildings, think about architecture? Well, they have conceptualized uh, architecture as integrating structure, function, and aesthetics. Um, now, structure, I don't need to say anything about. Um, in conventional architecture, function has to do with the shaping of space. That's what one uh, is doing in architecture for human habitation and activities. Um, aesthetics is interesting because uh, there you get evaluation criteria when comparing good versus bad architectures. And, and one could argue that uh, uh, when studying a biological system, one uh, also has the sort of aesthetic specifications, if you want, attributes that lead to comparative judgments, uh, like that of robustness or evolvability or simplicity. Um, so I have a few things to say there. I don't think I will uh, belabor them. Um, uh, I just want to uh, end uh, this part with a little quote from Darwin, which I uh, like very much. He says, when we contemplate every complex structure and instinct as the summing up of many contrivances, each useful to the possessor, 
nearly the same way as when we look at any great mechanical invention as the summing up of the labor, the experience, the reason, and even the blunders, blunders being important, of numerous workmen. When we thus view each organic being, how much more interesting, I speak from experience, will the study of natural history become? So I think he foresees uh, our interest. So let me go now to the program uh, of this week and, and uh, tell you um, a little bit of why uh, the talks have been organized the way they have. So what I've told you is something very general and abstract, how to make this concrete. Well, we picked one engineering theory, which is control theory, which is, I think, very relevant for the topic of this uh, uh, school, um, and uh, picked two biology examples. One is locomotion, um, and the other, uh, actually, uh, I had picked locomotion, but uh, it really became insects, so we don't have any vertebrates in here quite. Um, and the other was uh, affect. Um, and the idea was that in both cases there is dynamics. In locomotion, it's, it's physical dynamics. The body moves around. In affect, it's, um, you can th still think of emotions from a dynamical system's uh, perspective. Um, I think one... Uh, uh, kind of um, hint that thinking in dynamical systems terms about affect has become important is that in, in psychiatry there's a movement away from thinking about uh, psychiatric disorders as a disbalance of chemicals to thinking of them in terms of dysregulation, dynamic dysregulation uh, of the brain. Um, so th there was an idea that here's the engineering theory, which is control theory, um, and then uh, one wants to think about um, insect locomotion, um, although I think we will also hear about insect cognition. Um, and there, uh, uh, it would be interesting to see how um, one can apply these principles both to cognition and to, uh, to locomotion. Um, and, and then we will have a, a couple talks that relate to uh, affective um, systems. Uh, we also have um, a couple other things. One is, um, just uh, uh, signal processing, oops, I think I did something there. I must have clicked on it by mistake. Um, sorry about that. Oops. Yeah, just click on the red box to the right. Ah, I see. Good things will happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, right. Right, I have just signed on to something. Um, uh, so one of the important things in control is estimation. One has to look at what the environment is telling you, and Mitya Shlopsky is going to tell us about how thinking in engineering terms about signal processing can help us understand the visual system in a, in a sophisticated way. Um, it, today, uh, late, uh, later in the afternoon, Moritz Helmstarter and Myself will talk a little bit about circuits. Moritz will talk about EM reconstruction of small parts uh, of brain circuits. I will talk about a project I'm running to map um, uh, larger scale circuits using uh, tractography and light microscopy uh, in the mouse. Um, tomorrow, um, we have uh, uh, Bassam uh, Bamie, who's a control theorist. Um, who will be giving us a tutorial introduction to control theory, um, a lecture and a, a tutorial. Um, and we also have, um, oops, I'm trying to find out how to scroll, yeah. We have, uh, we are uh, fortunate to have uh, Nick Straussfeld, um, who has uh, uh, you know, a, a great scholar in the area and produced a lovely book which I also highly recommend. It's called Arthropod, Arthropod Brains, um, and Nick will tell us about um, Arthropod Brains from an evolutionary uh, uh, perspective. Um, uh, and then on, on Wednesday, um, uh, we are also fortunate to have uh, uh, Professor uh, Srinivasan, who's traveled all the way from Australia to tell us uh, uh, about arthropod uh, brains um, as well. Um, uh, on, when, on Thursday, um, 
uh, we have a, a change because unfortunately Massimo Vargasola who was going to tell us about his work on um, biological sort strategies, his f uh, father had a stroke and he had to um, stay back. So we will announce a change there. Um, uh, then we will have uh, Jin Hyung Lee who will tell us about um, optogenetic uh, fMRI. So these are tools to control brain activity and therefore control um, behavior, relatively new tools that are um, uh, of interest. Um, on Friday, we have Don Pfaff um, to tell us about um, quantification of uh, behaviors uh, related to generalized brain arousal, so arousal and affect being uh, related things. Um, and uh, Tony Prescott uh, will, tell, uh, will tie some of this work back into robotics. Um, there are other, um, would you like to comment, Paul, on the uh, afternoon tutorials? Um, well, what we can say, so the idea of the tutorials is that um, they go to more depth to the different, into the different topics. Um, so the ones that, that Parthen has mentioned to you yet, so the ones we have Armin and then Carney, who will start a tutorial on IQR and DAC, and that really is, the goal of this is and, um, to give you access to a simulation environment to rapidly build system level models of brain-like systems that you can easily interface to external systems like robots. Okay. And maybe um, tomorrow, if we present the projects, uh, Armin and Karin will say something about, about that tutorial. And then um, Alexander Maier, who is not here yet, I think, I haven't seen him yet. I am, I am. Oh, very good. <laughs> so Alexander then also will, will speak in a bit more detail about this tomorrow. Um, there we talk about this project, Extended Sensor Motor Contingencies. It's about a very different way of thinking about not only action, but also cognition. We think more about how also cognition is grounded in action. And that tutorial will focus on, let's say, a set of computational models that have been used in that field or are relevant for that field. And then lastly, the tutorial Friday afternoon, Armin again, in this case, talking about uh, a system that we have been developing here called the Rehabilitation Gaming System which is an interactive virtual reality environment that um, we are using now to treat uh, stroke patients um, successfully on, on both acute and chronic stroke patients. And then this is a way, it's a very hands-on kind of tutorial so that you can also start to, to think about using that, that system to run experiments here on human motor control and uh, decision making. So, but um, that's a short version. Then tomorrow you will get a bit more detail on that when we describe also the project. Okay, so I guess we will take a short break. One thing I would encourage uh, the students to do is to take the opportunity to uh, interact with the lecturers um, outside of the um, lecture sessions. Um, I think uh, several of them are here for the entire week and it's quite a um, privilege to <laughs> have access to this group of people. So please really take advantage of that. Yeah, so um, to follow up on that, this is why uh, this year we have organized lunch as a collective experience in this uh, little tunnel uh, that you will discover very soon. Um, so free food is often a good attractor, especially for students, but we hope also for lecturers. And it's, it, the, the whole idea would be that this is a very natural moment to really talk with the people who are around you and especially with the lecture. So really make use of this opportunity. There's free food, people will be there. So uh, grab them and uh, spoil their lunch. Yeah? All right. So uh, let us take a, uh, we are running a little late, 10 minute break and 11.10, uh, yeah. uh, we will reconvene for Mitya's talk. Excellent, thank you. Okay.